Hello, everyone. This is Stephen with the Woods Somebody Testify podcast. I am here with my Uncle Jeremy Buzzard. He is here to tell about getting healed of seizure as, as a boy. Welcome. Thank you, Stephen. Um, <clears throat> so, I guess to start at the beginning, um, epilepsy runs in my family. Uh, my mom had epilepsy many, many years ago. God wondrously healed her of epilepsy. Uh, two of my older brothers also had epilepsy. And I think it was about the time that I was four or five years old, I had my first seizure and was diagnosed <clears throat> with epilepsy. And uh, obviously I had to uh, uh, to uh, go to the doctor and, and was put on medication. Um, I took phenobarbital. I don't remember exactly what the dosage was. I just remembered that it was these little small white pills. Um, took two of them. I believe it was twice a day, morning and night. Uh, they were very chalky tasting. I didn't like the way that they tasted. I didn't like the way that they made me feel. I can also tell you that... Um, a big chunk of my first grade year uh, of school is lost to memory uh, as if they were adjusting my medication. And I think it was in my first grade year, somewhere along in there, that myself and my older brother, Mark, um, we were taken to Oklahoma City and the, they did what is known as an EEG, which is a scan of your brain. Um, and did all the testing to see, um, really how, you know, how that the disease would progress and, uh, would there be any hope or any chance of me growing out of the, out of the disease as that I grew older. And my older brother, Mark also has diabetes and his epilepsy is complicated by his diabetes. And I can remember, um, uh, after that, the test was run. And the preliminary results came back and they met with us there that they told my mom and dad that while it was possible that my older brother might would grow out of his epilepsy, um, that it was not possible for me that I would always have epilepsy. And, you know, I didn't like that. That broke my heart. And uh, that's kind of the way that things were as long as that I was on medication and as long as I remembered to take my medication and didn't skip doses and all that sort of stuff, uh, my epilepsy was controlled. If I uh, forgot to take my medication, especially if I took a trip somewhere and forgot to take it with me or, you know, what have you, um, then I probably would have a seizure. But after a couple of years, um, I had, I guess you would say, I had enough of the medication in my system or whatever that, uh, you know, I, I had went, I think it was around four years without having a seizure. And so about the time I was, I believe it was 12 years old, I uh, got a new pediatrician and pediatrician began re reviewing my files and had seen that it had been four years or so since I'd had a seizure and decided that the thing to do would be to try to wean me off of the medication um, and see, you know, just what would happen. Well, um, it was a long process. Um, they would cut down uh, the, the amount of the pills and then they would, uh, the, the, the amount of medication that was in the pills, I should say. And then they took it down to like... Um, only taking one pill in the morning, one pill at night, and then taking uh, only one pill in the morning or, you know, what have you. Well, as it we came down towards the end of that process, um, doctors probably would say that I had metabolized all of that medication out of my system. And so um, I woke up uh, on a Saturday morning and felt very, very strange and very, very weird. And those who have seizures know exactly what I'm talking about. You're very disoriented, had a headache, um, and recognized and, and was told that I'd had a seizure that morning. 
And that, of course, really broke my heart because I knew that that meant uh, that I was going to have to stay on medication. And also those who have dealt with epilepsy know that your life is limited whenever that you have seizures. There's things that you can and cannot do. And one of the things that you cannot do unless that your seizures are controlled and you have a history of them being controlled um, is you can't get your driver's license and you can't drive. And every 12 year old boy wants to learn how to drive and wants to drive. And so of course my heart was just shattered. My world, uh, you know, seemingly had come to an end or, you know, so I, I kind of thought, um, <clears throat> and so we, uh, we had, uh, four services a week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and Saturday night. So that night we went into service. I had been prayed for, and I don't know how many times throughout my life, every time that they had, um, you know, a prayer line, I was always in the prayer line. Um, and that night the service was not exceptional by any means. In fact, uh, I've described it before when I've given my testimony as that, uh, it was drier than last year's cornflakes. It, it really, really was. That the spirit of God wasn't didn't seem to be moving at all. Um, and yet, in the middle of that service, uh, after I believe it was after that we'd had song service and we'd got down to pray in the middle of service, I heard that still small voice speak to my heart and tell me, Jeremy, if you'll go sit on the altar and be prayed for, I'll heal you. And, uh, I didn't know that you were supposed to argue with God and, uh, I got my dad's attention and told him that I wanted to be prayed for. And dad, of course, knew why I wanted to be prayed for. And, uh, as the, uh, he called the saints in to pray, I could see the look on their faces. It was, oh, it's Jeremy again, you know, and, uh, and, and I know that many of them probably you know, felt like, well, we've been here before and, you know, nothing's ever happened before. And I, I, I sat down on the altar and they anointed me with oil and prayed for me. And I'd heard testimonies of people being healed before. And I'd heard how that God had just gloriously moved and, and blessed them and how that they had shouted and ran the aisles and, you know, and nothing like that happened for me. Um, the lightning didn't flash, thunder didn't roll. Uh, I didn't shout off the altar. Um, and as a matter of fact, I, I, I kind of got up feeling kind of foolish, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that nothing had happened or, or at least nothing that anybody could see had happened. Uh, but you know, the Bible talks to us about having that childlike faith. And I knew that God had spoken to me and said, if you will do this, I'll heal you. Well, that was on a Saturday night, and they had already scheduled because that they were reducing the amount of my medication. They had already scheduled that I was to have another EEG on Tuesday morning. And so we make the trip this time to Children's Hospital in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we make the trip up there Tuesday and get checked in. And my mom tells them that I had had a seizure on Saturday morning. And... They said to her, well, if he did, um, we should be able to tell on the EEG that, that, you know, the, the after effects of having the seizure, we, and I don't understand how all that works by any means whatsoever. Um, uh, but they, they let her know, well, if he had a seizure, it, it should show up. We should be able to tell. And, uh, I, for some reason, I, I can remember feeling excited and, uh, it took me for you have to go to sleep in order for them to do the EEG. And uh, it seemed like it took me forever to go to sleep. And finally I did. And uh, if you've never had an EEG, it's not, it is not a pleasant experience whatsoever. They glue, it feels like a hundred little <laughs> electrodes to the top of your head um, so that they can measure all this stuff. And, uh, and then you have to go to sleep and imagine trying to go to sleep with like 50 wires attached to your head, you know? Um, but finally I did and I went to sleep and they ran the test and then they come in and they wake you up and everything. And, 
and they take us back out into the preliminary results waiting room, you know. We're sitting there, and, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and it seems like it's taken them forever to come back there. And finally, they come in, and the consulting f- physician comes in, and he asks my mom, are you sure this boy had a seizure on, on Saturday morning? And she said, I'm sure. Uh, seizures run in the, in the family. His older brothers have seizure. We know what the symptoms are. We know he had a seizure, a full-blown seizure on, on Saturday morning. And he said, well, I don't know about all. I trust what you're saying. And he said, but this boy doesn't have seizure problems. It, it's not there. And we can't find it anywhere. And said his brain waves are perfectly normal. Said, take him home. Throw away his medication. He doesn't need it anymore. That has been 34 years. And from that day to this day, I've never had one more seizure. God has gloriously healed me and has kept me healed um, for all of these years. And, And you can't tell me that God doesn't heal. Uh, because he's healed me, and I've seen him heal time and again. And none of your kids have seizures? None of my kids have had seizures. Uh, just, I remember at one time you had said that when you, after you got prayed for, you felt kind of foolish. So you kind of felt, would you feel foolish, maybe confident, or what all? Yeah, so, <clears throat> I, you know, um, that night that I, I felt like the Lord had spoke to me and said, if you'll go sit on the altar and, and be prayed for, I'll heal you. Well, I was expecting, you know, that I would, God's going to come down. I'm going to shout all over the place. I'm going to be able to get up and proclaim like I've heard people, you know, for years that God has healed me. Um, but like I said, the service was dry and it didn't change from being dry because that I, stepped out on faith and obeyed God. And, you know, I didn't shout, lightning didn't flash, thunder, nothing nothing like that happened. And I did get up feeling like, you know, a little bit foolish, like, well, am I sure that I, it was that really God? You know, I, I, I knew what, that I'd heard, I knew what I'd felt, but my experience wasn't like everything that I'd ever heard, you know. Oh. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to straighten that because I had heard that. It was like, you know, multiple emotions simultaneously. You were all going through your head. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds just about, about like I, I would feel. Yeah. It, I am sure. Five minutes later, I'm not so sure no more. Yeah. And, and, and part of that too, I, I don't remember if it was that time or another time that uh, I felt like God told me to do something and uh, I tried to do it. Um, after that I left the service, then it was really on me because then, you know, when, when you're around the saints of God, uh, there, there's such a support system there and people let you know that they love you, that they're, they care for you, they're praying for you. But when you get alone, then that's when the enemy talks to you a lot. And, uh, you know, he, that, that's when he really attacked my mind and was like, hey, you, you, you really feel like that God spoke to you and said that he'd do this for you. And, and now, you know, lightning didn't flash, thunder, you didn't shout everywhere. You nothing. Remember all those stories that you heard about people being healed and nothing like that happened to you. And that was true. Nothing like that had happened to me. It's not about the lightning flashing or the thunder rolling. It's not about shouting all over the place. It's about that connection with God. And it's about obeying God when he, when he speaks to you. And because that I, I did that in that childlike faith. God honored that and healed me. And, uh, you, you know, you, you can't convince me that God didn't heal me um, because, you know, of uh, the way that things had happened. I, they had told me that you'll never grow out of it. But then I didn't have seizures. So they started to take me off my medication, which meant you do have seizures. And of course, that is going to mean that you're going to stay on medication. And that means that you're not going to, you know, do this and this and this and this. And, uh, and, and God came by and said, I'll heal you. And he did heal me. And, uh, and, and then I think about, you know, where I've been over the last 30 some odd years 
and uh, all the things that I've done, um, that it had to be God. And, you know, um, that was when I was 12 years old. Um, a couple of years later, I would get my driver's license and my dad normally uh, in the summertime preached four, five, six camp meetings. And I drove dad everywhere and took him to all of his meetings. I wouldn't have been able to do that if God hadn't healed me. And God called me to preach, and I started trying to preach. And I've uh, been privileged to be able to travel the country and uh, go here and go there. And though I'm not saying that I couldn't have done those things, but it would have been much more difficult if God hadn't healed me. And uh, I, I believe in the healing power of God. And uh, I've, I've seen God work time and time and time again. And uh, I believe that, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, I, I've, I've seen him work. I've seen him touch and bless and heal. And, and God uh, hasn't lost one bit of his power. And he's not lost one bit of his authority. And I believe that the same God that healed my mom healed me. And uh, I, I've seen him heal since then. And I know that God is real. All right, so thank you for coming on, making time tonight after service. Thank you.